This is the wife of the Vice-Chancellor of an Oxbridge University. I call this series of sketches about her Ing Lit. I've done three. This is number three. The scene is always the same. We're in a book-lined study. And there are a lot of group photographs around. Oh, I never can find the sleeve. There we are. A lot of group photographs around. And over the door, a pair of crossed oars. <laughs> and on the sofa and the armchairs is a chintz designed by William Morris. And it's probably original. <laughs> Mrs. Finley, dear, I shall be in the study the whole morning, should you have dire need of me. Yes, letters. I'm about to plunge into a very uninviting ocean of correspondence, none of it, alas, for joy. So I, I would welcome an interruption, should there be just cause. Oh, I'd love some elevenses. Yes, about half past ten. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely, but coffee only, nothing very nicious. No, I must try and be rigid. Well, bless you, my dear. Oh, I am so sorry. I didn't know there was anybody in here. I'm the Vice-Chancellor's wife, and I expect you've come to see my husband and you've missed him by a whisker. Oh, come see me. Oh, how very nice of you. Well, um, would you like to take your hat off? You are a young man, I think. <laughs> it is a little difficult to see under the floppy brim. Oh, yes, I haven't noticed your moustache. <laughs> You know, since we are in the house, perhaps it might be friendlier if you were to take off your hat. Oh, just put it anywhere and do sit down. Um, are you a member of this university? And uh, do I perhaps know you? What is your name? Mervyn. Uh, Mer Mervyn anything in particular? Mervyn will do. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> Mervyn, I must just ask you, how did you get into the house? Oh, it was open, was it? Oh dear, my husband really is too absent-minded about doors. He simply sesames through them, with never a backward glance. And you know, the insurance people aren't at all fond of it. Nor am I, because it does make for drafts, doesn't it? Did you by any happy chance close it behind you? Well done, well done, well done. What, what can I do for you? You've come from, pst. Could you say it again? Pst. How do you spell it? <laughs> P-S-S-S-T. Oh, yes. Psst. Yes, I have heard, heard about it. Does it signify something? I didn't know we had an underground newspaper in this university. <laughs> and it's called Psst. Oh, isn't that exciting? Has it been going on for long? Two weeks. Oh, triumphant. <laughs> I suppose it must of necessity be fairly disagreeably destructive. That is its function. Yes, well, <laughs> if you ask a silly question. Um, I must ask, what kind of a part do you play? That must be very demanding, editing and writing at the same time. And, and what, what kind of things? Total exposure. <laughs> In every sense of the word. <laughs> well, uh, I can appreciate this passion for frankness, you know, but I think I'm a little less in love with the idea of total exposure. Well, in the obvious sense, it must be so chilly. <laughs> and rather difficult to keep a fresh eye on things. And then, of course, it never really is, in the other sense, total exposure, because none of us know absolutely everything about anybody, do we? No, as you say, I expect it is bloody hard work. <laughs> then I think most missionary zeal probably is. Oh, do lie down if that's how you feel. <laughs> You'll find an ashtray just beside you. I wonder, could I ask you if you'd keep your sandals off that little cushion? We're rather fond of it. It's been embroidered by a beloved great aunt of my husband's, and I think the violets have a certain charm. Um, I don't know. Did you, um, by any chance, know that I happen to be a writer, too? I, I don't... Did you perhaps wish to invite me to write something for... No, why should you? Why should you? <laughs> no, no, why should you? No, and anyway, with my husband being vice-chancellor, it might be a little bit embarrassing. There are certain family loyalties. Well, um, what is your problem? Not selling enough copies. Oh, hard cheese. <laughs> and after only two weeks, two, um, 
must ask you something. Mervyn, um, what gave you the idea that I might uh, perhaps be on your side, as it were? Oh, when did you see me on the telly? Well, I ask because I've done it very little. I was on it once when a book I wrote won a literary prize. Yes, it was rather fun. And uh, another occasion, I was on a discussion program with three party political men of quite stunning boredom. <laughs> I remember I was very nearly deafened by the sound of axes being ground. <laughs> Did I perhaps say something illuminating? You don't remember? <laughs> well, nor do I. What then? I look gutsy. Oh, do I? Is that a good thing? Oh, hurrah. Good. Oh, are you feeling more rested? Well, good. There's another ashtray just there. Well, now, look, in what way can my gutsiness best serve you? You want to get the paper banned. Well, of course, that might help to sell it. But, you know, I'm not in a position to ban anything. Oh, my husband is, but he's not one for banning things. He feels people really have got to make up their own minds. I'm afraid he's not much of a Mrs. Mary Westhouse, or whatever she's called. <laughs> I think he's rather more of a Mrs. Patrick Campbell. <laughs> oh, haven't you heard of her? Oh, people are so young. Well, <laughs> she, she was an actress of considerable renown and a friend of GBS, and she is supposed to have said that she did not mind what people did, so long as they didn't do it in the street and frighten the horses. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a, a delightful thought. But now, look, banning your paper. I suppose you feel that it's very important that your paper should continue. It has a, a, some mission to help us all on our way. How do you, how do you see that happening? Total anarchy. <laughs> no, you're awfully total, aren't you? <laughs> Mark you, um, I think uh, anarchy in the abstract has a certain drawing power. And uh, then I stop and I think, yes, but who is going to be responsible for the drains? Well, I think you should think about that, Mervyn. Plumbing is central to the better life. As people who want to get rid of everything never quite see it through, I don't think. So, while I am indeed on your side when it comes to things like liberty and progress and other such noble concepts, I don't feel somehow that uh, anarchy is going to bring them about, and I, I feel my husband might not exactly cheer. Incidentally, do you know my husband? Oh, you should. Well, he's a member of the human race. <laughs> and he's both awfully nice, too. And I tell you what, he knows a great deal about anarchy. Not entirely pro, but fully conversant with. Now, look here, I've got a very good idea. Come to supper on Sunday and you can talk to him. You could interview him for your paper. What's your paper called? Psst. <laughs> How about this for a headline? Psst. Grills Vice-Chancellor. <laughs> Don't think it's a good idea. Well, all right, not if you don't. Anyway, you, you come to supper on Sunday, and uh, you don't look awfully well nourished to me. Have you had breakfast? Oh, you really should. You know, it's a civilized meal. Well, look here. Our Mrs. Finlay, who looks after us quite beautifully, is startlingly gifted with an egg. <laughs> and you know, it would overexcite her to a degree to be allowed to coddle one for you now. <laughs> so I tell you what we'll do. We'll go and we will select our egg, and you can tell me all about yourself. I want to know what your mother is like. And then, <laughs> oh, don't be so surly. Come on, live and let live. We can't all be anarchists. And look, when you come on Sunday, will you promise to wear that uh, very attractive uh, suede uh, jerkin? I, I like all those fringy bits. No, I'm quite serious. Oh, I think it's a very superior garment. And if I've got the phraseology right, you look awfully grooved in it. <laughs>